Happy Lord's Day, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Peace to you from God our Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ. One question you may be asking during this pandemic period is, when will all this end? Or is Jesus coming back now? Let's say for instance, just for example, that you know Jesus is returning later this week. How will you live your life? Will you quit your job? Will you do devotions and pray all day? Will you reach out to your family members and friends who have not yet known Christ? Will you isolate yourself? Would you change anything that you are doing today? These questions do not only bother us today, because this already happened with the early church, such as the church in Thessalonica in our passage. Some just waited for the Lord's return, and they did nothing. Similarly, Christians over the course of history have answered this question in different ways. You may have heard of stories about Christians who left their jobs and sold all they had. Some even moved to an isolated place to await Jesus' return. Others climb a mountain to only discover that they have to go back down when Jesus did not return. Sadly, these people are left behind to figure out what to do next with their lives. We cannot take this extreme view lightly, because it happened in history, it can also happen today. If you were to ask the Apostle Paul, he would most likely tell you to continue to persevere with what you are doing while eagerly waiting for Jesus. So the big question is, what should we be doing while waiting for the imminent return of Christ? One time, a preacher in his sermon gave me something to think about when he asked this question to his congregation. Have you ever thought about the day you accepted Christ? Why didn't you immediately go to heaven? Simple. As God's people, we have work to do. We are saved to serve. We are transformed to glorify God, as Reverend Anthony mentioned last week. What then is the right diligence the Bible speaks about? How can we balance our work and living out our Christian calling? May God's word today help us answer these questions based on 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 to 13. I invite you to open with me to our passage today. Allow me to read God's word for you. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labor we worked night and day, that we, might, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command, If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great morning that we can gather once again to worship you and to hear from your word. Lord, we thank you for your grace and faithfulness in each one of us as you have continuously provided for our needs and protected us. Lord, we pray that you will clear our minds, 
to our hearts this morning to be able to understand and apply your word. This we ask and pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is interesting to note that Paul, in the closing part of 2 Thessalonians, urged the people to stay away from idleness. The church in Thessalonica faced three major things that churches today can also experience. Suffering, false teachers, and idlers, idle people. We will focus on idleness. Interestingly, Paul already dealt with the issue of idleness in his first letter to the Thessalonians, found in chapter 5, verse 14a. This is noteworthy, because of all the parting words that Paul can say to them, he mentioned the problem of idleness twice. This shows that it must be carefully looked at by every believer. We cannot take idleness lightly. When Paul used the word idle, it's often translated to laziness or slothfulness, which is not necessarily wrong, but limits its meaning. When Paul used the original language for idleness, ataktos, it means living disorderly, living wastefully, irregularly, without a rhythm. So God's people who do not live up to what they are commanded to do. Paul used this word because the church is not entirely lazy. Yes, there are those who do nothing at all, and we can see that in verse 10b. Meanwhile, there are also those who fail to live up to their calling as God's people. They are negligent to God's work. But we have to have the right diligence. We want to have the right diligence. Therefore, first, Paul directly commands us in verse 6 to be on guard. First, we have to be on guard. Quoting from Proverbs 24, verses 30 to 34, the Bible says, I pass by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense. And behold, it was all overgrown with thorns. The ground was covered with nettles, and its stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and considered it. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber, and want like an armed man. We must be careful when we see others or our own self living in a taktos, or in a disorderly manner. The attitude of a sluggard can be contagious. When we see people living carelessly, we too can become complacent. It's contagious. I remember the story of Gideon. God told Gideon, tell your men, whoever is afraid, let him go home. Judges 7.3 Fear is obviously contagious here, and so is idleness. Idleness or living in a disorganized lifestyle is a challenge we face greater today as a result of the pandemic period, due to the quarantine period. Many of us have our schedules disrupted, even our sleeping patterns change. In effect, we get restless, and the days, the weeks, the months, they just go by quickly. And the main result is unproductiveness. Unproductiveness. And this is what Paul meant when he commands us to keep away from the idle brother. We too may be unconsciously doing the same thing. However, let's not be too quick to misunderstand what Paul is saying here. Keeping away does not mean no more contact with the idol brother. Jump to verse 15. Paul adds, Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. We must reach out to those who are idlers and encourage them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 12. Therefore, firstly, we must be on guard because idleness can be contagious. Secondly, Paul commands us to imitate godly examples. Isn't it that there are times when it's easier to imitate what is wrong than what is right? Look at verse 11. Paul says there are those who are busy bodies. They are not only freeloaders, but they are busy meddling in other people's affairs. They lead to gossip, criticism, and disharmony in the church. And bad examples such as these are easy to imitate. They spread like gangrene or how fast an infection can spread. And Paul reminds this to the young pastor, Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 16 to 17a. Avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, 
and their talk will spread like gangrene. In contrast, Paul commands the believers to imitate him, him and his team, when they were having their ministry in Thessalonica. Imitation is actually a key theme to Paul's teaching. We recall a famous verse, right? 1 Corinthians 11.1 1, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. When Paul was called by Jesus, he treasured everything about Christ and dynamically shared the truth, the gospel. Paul was not only a great preacher, he walked the talk. He was a good example to the churches and people that he ministered to. The more he loved God, the more he loved others. He wanted to impact people for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what you call a contagious faith. May we desire to do the same. Having heard of some idle Thessalonians, Paul in verse 7 addressed them by speaking about what he and his colleagues were able to do when they were still in Thessalonica. Paul and his team toiled and labored night and day in order to pay for their needs. They did not want to become a burden to anyone, unlike those who refused to work when they could or were undeniably able. They were lazy. Paul and his team, they were given financial assistance from those to whom they ministered to. And among those, we can see clearly in Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 and onwards, especially in verses 15 to 16. In Philippians 4, in his closing letter to the Philippi believers, Paul thanked them for their financial help. Because the Philippians were one of his primary partners in the ministry who eased his work. But why did Paul and his team reject the help of the Thessalonians? If you look at Philippians 4.16, he mentions, Even when I was in Thessalonica, you were of a big help to me. So why did Paul and his team reject the help of the Thessalonians? They chose to reject their assistance to show the importance, to highlight the Christian model of diligence for the young believers to see and imitate. Paul also recognized that some diligent Thessalonians were already burdened. The diligent Thessalonians, some of them, they were already burdened by those who were lazy. So to add Paul and his team would be a greater burden. Here, we observe the balance Paul and his colleagues were able to do, working for the Lord's work and the work he gave to them. They were able to balance it. So presently, we see the same thing with Christians who minister in their respective workplaces. Some would conduct Bible studies to their colleagues. Some employers would nurture their employees and reach out to them by having a Bible study for them. Some would put Bible verses in their products. And some would even go the extra mile to help other people to show Christ-likeness. So let's not lower the bar by compromising to complacency. Rather, let's look up to godly examples, those who are diligent in doing their part for the gospel's work. So Paul says in verses 7 to 11, by seeing his example, they ought to imitate him because he imitates Christ. Firstly, be on guard, for idleness can be contagious. Secondly, imitate godly examples, those who diligently do the Lord's work. And lastly, get up and get going for the work the Lord entrusted to us. Get up and get going. That's the third one, found in verses 12 to 13. In verse 12, Paul concludes with this command, the command to do our work the Lord laid before us. Resist the temptation to be idle. Because idleness is a sin that we seldom detect in ourselves. When laziness, disorganized lifestyle gets in the way, the gospel is greatly affected. Brothers and sisters, if I may ask, what were you busy doing the last four months of community quarantine? Were we able to perform well in our work and our calling? I'm certain that there are people in our midst who are affected in, your, in their work because of the pandemic. Many are jobless without a choice. May God grant you wisdom as you earnestly seek for his guidance. However, in our passage, when Paul calls out the lazy people and rebukes them, 
They are those who can work, but refuses to work. He still calls for assistance to those who are unable to work because of physical limitations or cultural limitations of their time. So by mentioning his ministry to the Thessalonians, Paul tells us that the work of the Lord is still ongoing. Therefore, we too should continue to perform in our calling. We are called out of the world to serve God. Pandemics, phenomenons, persecutions, and other perils, they never stopped the Lord's work throughout history. They never did. Nothing ever stopped the Lord's work. Neither should our work for the Lord cease today. Allow me to share a quote. Nobody is ever too busy. If they care, they will make time for it. Do you care about Jesus and his work? Is Jesus your everything? With our transformed life in Christ, our theme for this year, do we value God and other people? Do they matter to us? If they do, then let's continue to live with a kingdom-focused mindset. So what? What can we pick up from this message? As we recall earlier, there were some Thessalonian believers who just decided to not do anything, even if they were able. They were willfully negligent because they were just waiting for the return of Jesus. They were negligent of their work. And Paul reminds us to be on guard, imitate God the examples, and get up and get going. We have a BIG task ahead of us. We have a big task ahead of us. We have a BIG responsibility. We have a big responsibility when God called each one of us into his family. Truthfully speaking, now is the best time to do the work of the Lord. Just like what I mentioned earlier, we don't immediately go to heaven because there is work to do. We are saved to serve God, no longer serving sin, no longer serving ourselves, but serving our Lord Jesus Christ. And that means we have to cultivate discipline in our lives. That's the first thing that we can do. Cultivate discipline in our lives that makes us more like Jesus. Reading His Word, memorizing His Word, praying, sharing the good news, the glorious gospel to other people. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a challenge because it's a discipline that we must develop in order to be able to do these things. Cultivate discipline in our lives. Second, continue to grow in maturity by listening intently to biblically grounded sermons, music, reading books that inspire us to live the kingdom-focused lives. That means we use our time in a way that is profitable, avoiding both laziness and sinful busyness, busy bodies, and practicing self-denial. That means we nurture our relationships that builds up our family, our family in Christ, the church, our friends, our relationship with our spouse, in God's perspective. That's how we nurture our relationships. Be diligent and faithful to the work God entrusted to us. And lastly, and more importantly, in fact, now is a more opportune time for discipleship, evangelizing unbelievers and nurturing believers. Many are still working at home, and some are able to arrive home earlier from work. With the online approach to ministry, for the meantime, each one of us can actually reach out and disciple a person or consistently meet our groups every week. We, can, we know that some are anxious during this time. Some are sad because of what is happening around us due to the pandemic. And a call or a chat can actually go a long way. Really, a call or a chat can actually go a long way for these people. Show them the love of God in Christ. In fact, we can also invite our friends or family members to a group, to our group, or refer them to a group that can help them understand the Bible better and help them to know Christ. Pray for them first that God will open their hearts. Ask for wisdom on how you can approach them and walk with them just as Jesus walked with his disciples. We praise God for seeing our different groups in church of all ages meeting consistently every week. 
and growing in maturity. Keep up the good work and continue to do this for the Lord. Indeed, the kingdom of God, it has no limits. There's no limits for the kingdom of God. To those who have been reaching out to others, praying for fellow believers, praying with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, to those who are sharing Christ and leading Bible studies, allow me to encourage you through Paul's words based on verse 13 of our passage. As of you, brothers and sisters, do not grow weary in doing good. As of you, brothers and sisters in the Lord, do not grow weary in doing good. The Lord sees what you are doing. The Lord knows what you have been doing for Him. Allow Him to bless you, good and faithful servants, in His due time. And those are the beautiful words we long to hear from our Lord Jesus Christ. Good and faithful servants of mine. As followers of Jesus, whom we love, let's not forget the kingdom work. Laziness has no part in the character of a follower of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, who is in us, will surely transform, empower, and enable us to be faithful to our calling as we fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's be faithful to finish the work God began in us. So what is the right diligence, brothers and sisters, in the Lord? We fulfill the work God began in us in Christ Jesus. So let's be B.I.G. for the gospel work. Let's be big for the gospel work. Be on guard, imitate God the examples, and get up and get going for the Lord in whom he has given us a work to do. We have a B.I.G. task ahead of us. We have a big task ahead of us. We have a B.I.G. responsibility. We have a big responsibility when God called each one of us into his family. May God continue to empower and encourage each one of you. May God bless you through the preaching of his word. Thank you.